All right, I think we'll get started. Thank you everyone for coming to Retire the Fire, today being October 10th of 2019. We would like to introduce you Vinny Zarella, who's had more than 12 years with the North Reading Fire Department, 20 years with the town. <laughs> Vinny has a passion for teaching the and it shows in all that he does. You can feel his passion when he sparks up the conversation around home safety for seniors and fire prevention at home. He was nominated this year for Fire and Safety Educator of the Year Award. This remarkable nomination to be recognized by the that he puts into his programs, and we'd like to welcome Vinny Zarala, North Reading Firefighter. as we are getting older we're seeing our older population being higher risk and more fatalities because they're succumbing from their injuries from their fall an example would be an individual who's on blood thinning medication falls doesn't go to the hospital to get checked out and they have a head bleed and they succumb to their injuries so as I keep tripping and hitting the uh, outside of this table mm. Let's talk about fall prevention. I'm here to talk about senior safety and retire the fire. And it encompasses a number of factors to protect you, the senior citizen, at your home. On your table, you will see a handout. How can we prevent falls in our home? One of the things that we do with senior safe coming to your home is we're going to look around, do a 360. We want to look for hazards. We want to look for, look at that again. I'm at that dime table. I'm going down low where it's safe. I think someone's setting me up. <laughs> or you like the fall so well that you want to see me do another mixed game. Oh, mixed fall. Oh, you an actor? No. Actor. The most common falls that we're seeing are people not wearing non-skid socks. They're just wearing socks on hardwood floors. We can prevent that by wearing those non-skid socks or wearing shoes that are going to reduce you from slipping on that floor. Grab bars in the bathroom, non-skid mats in the shower, bathtub can help reduce you from falling and injuring yourself. Underneath carpets, welcome mats, those non-skid pads that will contribute to the mat not being loose. How about clutter that might be in the house? Cords, stairs that need repairs, loose bricks. I can't tell you how many times we may go to our home and we'll see bricks that are damaged on the walkway. It's an accident. No one wants to fall except for me walking in and doing my demonstration. <laughs> but a fall, an unintentional act becomes an accident and you are perfectly fine that morning, and you arrive home, and because a loose step that needs to be repaired, or that brick that's on the walkway, something that could contribute to reducing your risk of falling is fixing that hazard. So please, when you leave, take the time to look at the handout. Maybe do a 360 around your home. Look for those hazards that could contribute to create an accident, and let's fix those. I will sound like a broken record repeating 
a number of things that we do. The senior safe program that the North Reading Fire Department participates in is going to your home and doing that 360, making sure that we can identify any hazards, remove them, correct them to keep you safe. Do we have any questions on fall prevention? It is a real serious event that happens in the United States and the number from the CDC, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who fall is increasing annually. So let's do our best to try to be more aware of our surroundings and maybe correct. But what do we do if we do fall? What could we do if we fall, but now I'm in the middle of the floor? How am I going to call for help? If someone is prone to falls, if someone is known to have general weakness, uses a walker, we suggest having a phone and a bag next to your walker or on your hip at all times. Now, technology's changed significantly that we've gone from cordless phones to cellular phones, and that is helping out tremendously. so much. Life Alerts. Great tool. Fantastic tool and it helps so many people in the midst of being in trouble. It alerts that organization who contacts the appropriate emergency medical company and is an immediate response. Done. Really well done. So take the time, review the fall preventions, Think about when you're at your home, if you're having general weakness, do you have the tools, do you have the resources to contact for help? It was interesting, I was just talking to a young woman in this audience right now, and she showed me a whistle, and I thought that was like the coolest idea. She has a whistle to notify people all around her. It works. Noise works. It alerts everyone else. So let's talk about more parts of Senior Safe when the fire department comes to your house and we're going to do that 360 and we're looking for fall preventions and we just cover a few areas of how to reduce the risk of fall. How do we gain access to your house? It's the middle of the night. You've just called because you're dizzy. You're not feeling well. You're home by yourself. It's one o'clock in the morning. You live in a split, it's on the second floor. The last thing we want to instruct you to do when you're feeling dizzy is to get up out of bed, walk down those stairs, and open that door. Now we're high risk for what? A fall, a secondary injury to what you're already having for symptoms. How do we gain access into your home without creating any damage? We're gonna to get to you. What can we do to minimize that damage? So I brought along with me today <coughs> two items that work really, really great. They're lock boxes. One you might recognize from real estate agents on the sale of homes. They'll put this around your doorknob. It's a special code that you know only by yourself. Your key goes inside this. The fire department through the senior center offers this cast iron lockbox that's mounted to your house. And when mounted to your house, no one is going to get it off. It's permanently mounted to a place that is accessible to the door in good lighting with the key inside, of course, so we can get to that door, unlock it quickly, and get to a patient. Some people have asked, well, what if someone rips it off? Well, the fight of is the only one that has a specialized key to get inside this cast iron box. They can rip this off the side of the house, they can throw it off the ground, they can start up a saw, they can try to cut this. By the time they start making all that noise, you will be alert to something that's going on and there's a number in case of emergencies that everyone should know that you call and that is what? Does anybody know that number? Nine one one. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't hear, I'm a little deaf in this ear. What was it? Nine one one. Very good, nine one one in case of any emergency. Let's dial that number immediately. No matter what phone number you are on, a cell phone or a home phone, dial 911. Let's get immediate direct service to you fast. These work out excellent 
We gain access, no damage to your house. Put the key back and on our way. I can discuss it with you in further detail, more about this on an individual basis after this discussion. There are other methods. We have a secure dispatch center where some people may have a garage code and they may feel comfortable that they want to provide us that garage code. We can utilize that as gaining access to your house as well. The whole key to this method is rendering care to the patient quickly, minimizing any damage done to the house. Some people hide keys. We're not recommending and suggesting that you hide keys in particular areas, but some people do. Interesting enough, the person said, it's in my backyard, underneath my deck. Now, underneath my deck, in the dark, 1 o'clock, and it's underneath one of the rafters. Now, I mean, I got it. Yeah, all right, the flashlight. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. But some of us do that. We forget our keys. This device can be purchased at a number of hardware stores, Home Depots, very popular. And this item from the fire department through the senior center we can discuss as well is available through us. All right, well, I'm sure you've seen this a bunch of times. There are nice handouts given out around here. The file for life. What a great, if you've not seen this, and if this is new to you, this is great information. So let's keep carrying on. You called up the fire department, you're not feeling well, you're short of breath, you're on the second floor, we get to your house, wow, they have a lockbox on the outside. Great, we use our specialized key. Or we know the code that you provided us, so we're in the dispatch center, we know what code to get into your house, and we get in, and we get to you fast. And we see the patient there, and they have difficulty breathing and all that. But on our way in, on the refrigerator, was this magnet, file for life. Great information on your past medical history. Great information on you. It provides us with any medications that you're currently taking. Any allergies. So it reduces the amount of questions the emergency medical technician needs to ask of you. Of course, questions will be asked, but it can minimize the amount of questions and provide the EMS provider, the paramedics, information that can be very useful and helpful in treating and caring for that individual. Now, these are located at the well, exit actually, yep. or all around. And I have a few, and there's yep. some up at the uh, stand on the left to me right at this moment. So please, if you don't have one, I'd grab one for every member of your family. It's excellent information to have for us to review. If you have any questions about it, we can also sit down and go over it with you as well. I always advise filling it out in pencil because things change. We do always have more inserts if you need inserts to redo. And you can always snap a picture if you have a cell phone of the information that you put on so you also have it with you. You can bring it in, we'd be happy to make a copy for you. You can put it in your wallet or your pocketbook so you have another one with you. All right, let's continue Senior Safe. Senior Safe Retire the Fire. Incredible program, 2014, we kick this program off. We go to senior citizens' homes, we go to anyone's home, and we identify, do they have the appropriate equipment in their house? Do they have the right detection for smoke and carbon monoxide? In 2014, we went to a resident's house. They did not have a carbon monoxide. The family had this wood stove, and they enjoyed sitting by that nice wood stove. These beautiful chairs, a nice wood stove in the middle. It's just a great setting. And one day, they just weren't feeling well. They weren't feeling well, and they went to the doctors. And on arrival back from the doctors, the CO detector that we installed with Retire the Fire was in alarm. And engines responded to find out that they had elevated carbon monoxide levels in their house. Their wood stove was not venting appropriately, which created carbon monoxide in the house. That contributed to them feeling sick. What would have happened if 
they didn't have the appropriate equipment to detect there was carbon monoxide in the house. Carbon monoxide is colorless, it's odorless, you can't smell it, and you can't see it like you can smoke. There could have been a real tragic accident that day. So part of the Senior Safe Corps retired a fire program on top of falls, on top of the fire for life, on top of home access. We're going to come to your house and we're going to look around and make sure that you have the appropriate detection, smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. We're going to test your detectors. We're going to pull the detectors down and make sure that they are compliant, that they're the appropriate style, that they are technology that they need to be, that they operate appropriately, and if they don't, through grants, fundraising, and donations that are made to the Senior Center and Fire Department, we're able to install brand new detectors for that senior citizen. Smoke detectors <laughs> saves lives. It was just in the recent year that we installed a smoke detector to a senior citizen in this community. The detector activated. He didn't see or any, he couldn't identify any smoke or anything in the house. He had a kitchen fire that was up above and the smoke detector did its job. Let me explain how smoke works if you're not familiarized with it. Smoke, like if you're familiar with the fireplace, it goes up the chimney and then disperses into the sky. But if there was a fire in this room, it's gonna create smoke and it's gonna go up to its highest point. It's going to hit the highest point, and it's trying to find a way out. The good news is, is our friend the smoke detector is up top, and he's going to alert us that there's a problem. And when the smoke detector goes off, in alarm, we need to get out and we need to stay out. We don't wait. We don't know why it went off. Is it carbon monoxide? Is it smoke? Is it fire? It's in alarm. Let's get out. Let's stay out. Once we're outside, we dial 911. Provide the address that you call the emergency from. Responding apparatus will be on its way immediately. But smoke, if you didn't have a smoke detector, just imagine that smoke hits its highest point and then it spreads across the ceiling. And just like a shade, when you pull it down, smoke starts to come down and it gets lower and lower and lower. Now, when you look around the room, it's clear breath of fresh air. You can see me very clearly. Now, I change the situation, and this black, poisonous smoke is what kills victims first. They choke. We teach our young kids in kindergarten, smoke can make you choke. Well, we also teach everyone to get down low and go. This is where the clear, fresh, cooler air is. We never want to walk through smoke. We never want to breathe smoke. That poisonous, dangerous gas can kill you. But when you look down here, this is the safer air, the cooler air. You get down low, you crawl fast, and you get out, and you stay out. So do you know how to get out of your house at 1 o'clock in the morning in the dark? Mm -hmm. Everyone's probably familiarized to get out of their house at lunchtime when it's light out, but in the midst of an alarm going off continuously at one o'clock, have you practiced? Do you know which way you're going to go? The alarms are going off, now you see smoke, your adrenaline's starting to get a little bit faster. You always want to have two ways out. Two ways out, and if you practice it, you're going to get comfortable with it, proficient at it, and there's a least, uh, excuse me, a less chance of you not escaping that house. So practice an escape plan. Know your routes of where you're gonna go. Two ways out, have an escape plan, and be outside of your house. And if there's a number of people that live in that house, we wanna go outside to a family meeting place. It's so important when you get outside that we know that everyone's outside. And if you're at that family meeting place, whatever is deemed safe, maybe it's a, a tree off to the side or the large rock on the, on the side of the house, we need everyone to meet there. That way when we arrive, you can say everyone's out of the house. And then we can plan accordingly. Does anyone have any questions up to this point about what we discussed? Some of us can't crawl. <laughs> oh, most of us. Probably. Yeah. 
So it's great information that you're providing and you're asking. If there's an individual that has a disability at home, we want to know about it at the fire station. And we're going to put that in our secure dispatch information. Because if we get a call from 123 Main Street for a fire, and under my special notes, I see that there's a handicapped gentleman in a wheelchair. We want to know that. We need to be prepared, arriving on scene, that there's an individual in there that's going to need assistance. We could discuss a number of ways about how you're going to crawl out, how you're going to seal crawl out, however you're going to get out of the house, drag yourself out. I thought coming earlier today and I saw the exercise group, I thought that was a fantastic thing seeing a tremendous amount of citizens here exercising, which is one way of keeping individuals healthy and strong to be functional, maybe to move in case of an emergency if it occurred. So back to that question, I'm not sure I'm going to have all the appropriate answers for the right ones, but after class, Maybe we can sit down and come and discuss a plan of particular steps that you would take in case of an emergency. But information to the fire department is always key. We have windows that are supposed to be exits. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of us really know how they open or... Wonderful question again. And when we come to your home, on top of everything that we're going to discuss, we'll look at that. Mm -hmm. Is that a viable route for you to go? Is it safe for you to go? Am I asking you to go out a window that's going to create a hazard and an injury? Again, it's proper prior planning. We need to see where you are, what you have. Create a plan. Hence, we just discussed the escape plan. Everyone should have an escape plan two ways out. And as you brought up, if the fight is at that doorway, my second way out perhaps could be a window. Great. Excellent. I just say, say, Let's go back to our smoke detectors as well. If you don't call us up, and we're unable to come to your house immediately, there's something that you can do, and that is change the batteries. When you hear a chirp, and, and I just heard a lovely lady say I, that I love that phone call, and we want to come out and provide that level of service to you. So if you're unable to test those batteries, if you're unable to change the batteries, we don't want you getting up on a ladder we want to come out, let us do our job, test the smoke detector, make sure it's compliant. If it is, change the batteries for you. And ceilings are becoming higher and higher in today's modern homes. They certainly are. But detect batteries should be changed at minimum once a year. They used to say two times, but once a year you want to change your batteries. An indication that your batteries are low is that chirping noise. Very good. And wouldn't you know, she always decides to chirp at 2 in the morning. <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's not at breakfast or lunch. It's at 2 in the morning. Not that I have any experience with that at the fire department, but it's 2 in the morning. It's chirping. So we can be proactive. Maybe it's on our calendar. Maybe it's with the clocks when we spring forward or fall back to change the batteries. Something that's a good indicator. Uh, when you buy a new battery, I mean a new smoke detector, are the batteries in there, are they good for a year? Or? So there's a variety style of smoke detectors. There are detectors that are just battery operated and technology has created a 10 year sealed battery. 10 year sealed battery. Now this detector I'm holding up in front of you is a smoke and a carbon monoxide detector with a 10 year sealed battery. You never change the battery, you just test it once a month. Wow. I don't 
which leads us to testing working smoke detectors saves lives. How do you know whether your detector works? I must share this story. I enjoy teaching uh, all the grade schools. They're just great listeners and they, they want to absorb, they want to take it all in and then they, the kids love to tell me stories. So, one of the things we tell the kindergarten, kindergarten kids, I want you to go home, I want you to talk to your parents that you live with, I want you to find all the detectors in your house. And after you find all those detectors, I want you to have them press the test button and test that detector to make sure that it is operating. This young boy went home and him and his mom went around and they counted all the detectors. The young boy said to his mom, we have to test them. A kindergarten boy. She gets up and presses that button hard and guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing. She thought she didn't press it hard enough so she got a step stool and she pressed it harder and nothing happened. She took the detector down and it had no batteries in it. Oh that would make it a boy. kindergarten boy <laughs> listened in class to what firefighter Z, they call me, asked them to do. He became a hero that day to his family, to the community. Could you imagine the accident that could have happened if there was a fire with smoke and they didn't test that detector? They came to me to an open house in October and told me that story, and I was so moved and happy all at once. So, it's so important to test your detectors once a month. All righty, all right, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do. Let's see. All right, so, I'm home. I gotta make the gravy. Right? So I'm home and I'm making that gravy. I got the oil in there with the onions. And all of a sudden, I see on TV. Oh my god, my favorite game show is on. <laughs> And I smell something, and I think it's my great old uh, smell from my gravy that I'm making. Although I forgot to begin putting the other ingredients into that delicious gravy I was making. And, um, uh-oh, what's that sound that I hear? It ain't Frankie Valley. Uh, well, it is, because he's one of my favorite singers. But it's the smoke detector going off. And I get up, and I see... Oh, wait, I get up. Uh. <laughs> and I see a haze of smoke coming from my kitchen. And there's a fire in my pot. The gravy's gone now. There's nothing I can do about that. So, what do I do? What do I do? Should I grab that cover with my bare hand? I never want to grab that cover with my bare hand. I should have an oven mitt accessible and close to me. Um, now, if I feel safe and comfortable to come near this pot that's on fire and it's flaming, I let to turn the heat off. If I can shut the heat off, I'm going to take away one of the things that contribute to fire. With a gloved hand, I want to come in at this pot like Captain America. <laughs> I want my shield out in front of me, and then I'm going to slide that over. I do not want it to splat and spread anything. I just smothered it. I took the oxygen away from this fire. <laughs> All right, well, I get the kill. I love that music, so it brings me back. I like it. <laughs> do you think it would be safe to pour water in this? No. No, no I do Do you that. think it would be safe if you had a fire extinguisher that you would hit it with a fire extinguisher? 
No. no. It really would not be a great idea because you're going to push that fire and spread that fire. Now, fire can spread fast and furious. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> we need to take away the heat. We need to take away the oxygen. The fuel is already inside that pot. We ain't getting to that. But we're going to remove two of the three things that need to create a fire. You guys want me to take this off? <laughs> <laughs> So, if you feel comfortable and you have a gloved hand, put a lid on it, smother it, turn the heat off on the stove, call 911, let us come out and reassure that everything is safe and fine. I don't want you trying to move this hazard because accidents can happen. And when an individual has a fire in their pot and they want to pour water and they move it, they spill it. And as things have happened in our town, it created a horrible kitchen fire. And it spreads fast, fast, and fast. Your safety is the utmost importance to us. So, take away the the heat, remove the oxygen by smothering it, call 911. We'll come to the house. Clearly, there's smoke up in the ceiling area. It could be a little bit more smoke in the house. We can help vent the house and remove that smoke out of your living area. Well, I would love to continue playing some fantastic music, <laughs> putting on a couple more costumes, maybe do a Sunny Sheer impression, but I know lunch is approaching. My name is Vincent Zarello, North Reading Fire Department, Senior Safe, Retire the Fire, is an incredible program, and I want it to spread across the community. Tell your friends, tell your family, spread the word. Smoke detectors save lives. It's a proven fact. The carbon monoxide saved the life in 2014. The smoke detector saved perhaps more damage. We never know what could happen during a fire in 2018. Let's get to your house. Let's do all the things that we do at Senior Safe. Let's look for your fall preventions. Let's talk about home access. Let's make sure that you have a file for life. Let's make sure that you have the appropriate smoke and carbon monoxide protection system in your house that's going to keep you safe. And anything else that you feel that you want to ask and talk about, let's do that. Because the number one goal is the residents of our community and keeping you safe and sound. That's my presentation for the day. Thank you for listening.